Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we want to get to know a tool to solve differential equations. Okay. So, as you know probably from your math lessons, differential equations are not that easy to handle. Yeah? This also was the intention to, to, to make a tool which is helping us with that. Yeah? And a French physicist with the name Pierre Simon Laplace succeeded. Uh, it, he was living from seven, 749 to 1827. And he invented something called now the Laplace transformation. Okay, and we are going to talk about this Laplace transformation right now. And uh, how it might help us. One to be said at the beginning, eh? we will not really hear how a Laplace transformation is working. Eh? I will, since we honestly don't need it as control engineers, as mathematicians, yes, but as control engineers. The control engineers even got a step further. They said, hey, why bother with the Laplace transformation if we can handle everything in the so-called picture area? We'll come to this. Huh? So let's first talk about the Laplace transformation. What is the Laplace transformation? Well, the Laplace transformation, let's say we have, we have some function huh, in time. Huh? This function has some form simply, whatever. Yeah? And if we do the Laplace transformation of this function, yeah, we end up at a different function, yeah? this time we usually use capital letters, with a different variable, no longer time variable, but the so-called picture variable, s. Yeah? This s is a complex variable, it's sigma plus j omega. Okay? So this is this, is this s. Yeah? This is the so-called time area, and this is so the so-called Laplace or picture area. Yeah. And I just want to mention it, that this is, the definition of the Laplace transformation is an integral from zero to unlimited of this function here, multiplied by e as s d dt. So if you can solve this integral, you are in the picture area. Huh? Then you get rid of this t and substitute it with some sort of s. Huh? Like I said, we're not going to do this. Yeah? We just want to look at the features the Laplace transformation is having. Huh? So at the properties of the Laplace transformation. And we will then see how those properties might help us to solve differential equations. One of these properties is the so-called linearity. So the Laplace transformation is a linear transformation. Linearity. What does it mean? This means if we do Laplace transformation of a multiplied by a function f plus b multiplied by a function g, yeah, then this ends up in a multiplied by f from s, yeah, the Laplace transform from f, plus b multiplied by the Laplace transform from g. Yeah. So the factors, linear factors, will simply stay there, additions will simply stay there, and the, the Functions will simply be translated one by one. Okay? Linearity. One property of the Laplace transformation. Then we do have the derivation rule. Mm -hmm. 
if we do the Laplace transformation yeah, of the nth derivation in time, yeah, we do end up s raised by the power of n multiplied by f plus s. Yeah? It would be nice if it would be that way. However, we have to consider starting conditions. Yeah? These starting conditions are the function value at the time zero. Yeah? And if we do have more than, if n is bigger than one, we really need to add something. Yeah? S mi minus two, We add, we add the change rate at position zero, yeah, and then pa 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 and so on and so on. S. Then we have the n minus second derivation. And then we have finally the n minus one derivation. Yeah. So we have not we have to consider the value at zero, the change rate of the value at zero, the change rate of the change rate at the value of zero, the change rate of the change rate of the change rate of the value at zero, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. However, if we simply assume that at zero nothing has changed, at the position zero nothing has changed, yeah, we say, okay. The function value at zero is zero, the change rate of the function at zero is zero, the change rate of the change rate is zero, and all change rates of all change rates of at position zero is zero. Only after zero, after the point in time zero, something is going to happen. Yeah? Then this whole stuff here, yeah? because we simply say this is zero, this is zero, this all is zero, is suddenly zero. Yeah? Then this derivation rule falls really down to only this part. So this Laplace transformation of the nth derivation is then s raised by the power of n fs. So this means, for instance, the Laplace transformation of the, of the first derivation is simply s multiplied by f from s. Okay? So each derivation just adds one power of s. Only true if these conditions, conditions are met that at the beginning everything is zero. This we have to keep in mind. Huh? Derivation rule. There is a derivation rule. There is also an also integration rule. Huh? Also use the small pen. <laughs> Integration rule. So this means the Laplace transformed uh, of an integral from zero to t of a function. Uh, so summing up this function from zero to the current point in time yeah, is simply the division by s. So it's exactly the vice versa. Yeah? Derivation is a multiplication by s, and integration is a division by s. Okay? Integration rule. Then there is the damping rule. The damping rule states that if we do a Laplace transform of a function which is in time damped, so it's getting smaller over time, uh, like for instance the, the discharge of a capacitor or something like this. Yeah? If this looks like this, yeah, then in the picture area we are shifting this by this damping factor. We are shifting this. Yeah? So if something is shifted in the picture area, it is damped in the time area. Damping rule. Yeah? 
And then there's also the time shift rule. This means the Laplace transformed of a function which is shifted by an amount of time t0. Uh, this will end up at a damping in, in the picture area. Uh, so here we have, this is mirrored somehow. Uh, so a time shift will end up in the damping in picture area. A shift in, in, in picture area will end up in a damping in time area. Time shift rule. Then we have the initial, initial value theorem. What does this mean? If we want to know the value of the function at a point zero plus, so a tiny, 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 infinitesimal small bit after zero, not before, not at, after, yeah? but very close after. Yeah? It is the same as if s is going to unlimited s multiplied by f from s. Huh? Those two things are the same yeah? if this final value is existing. If not, it's, it's, not, it's not valid. Yeah? But if this value is existing, this will be the same. Yeah? And there is also the end word, end word, <laughs> end value, yeah? end value theorem. This is exactly the other way around. So if I'm interested where the function will end up somewhere in distant, distant, distant future, in infinite far away future, then I only have to look where this term, same term, is ending up at zero, yeah? s going to zero. So these are some properties of the Laplace transformation. How do they help us now? Let's have a look at our differential equation from last time. This was the differential equation. And here we see, okay, there's a derivation. There's derivation, so I can apply the derivation rule. Yeah? Then there are integrals, so I can apply the integration rule. There are factors, so this is linearity, and there are also here uh, derivations, so I can apply derivation rule. Yeah. So let's try this. Yeah. Let's simply try this yeah, to transform this into, with the help of the Laplace transformation, into another sort. Yeah. So, here we have a constant factor. The constant factor will remain the same. So, this will be tm. And now, we have m derivation. So, this will end up in s raised by the power of m multiplied by xo from s. This is this term. Then, we have plus and whatever. And there is t1. And then here, this is only one derivation, so we end up with s multiplied by xo from s. Huh? This. And then plus xo from t will get xo from s. Huh? This is the left part. Huh? Now let's have a look at the right part. So we are coming from somewhere and then plus. And now here, f2. Here we have two, two integrations, so we end in 1 divided by s raised by the power of 2 and xi from s. 
Uh, it's this term. Uh, going further, plus f1. And now it's a single, single integration. So 1 divided by s, xi from s. Uh, and now what we have here, plus r0, xi, uh, linearity, just multiply with xi from s. Uh, and now here at the end, r1 multiply and now again derivation rule s xi from s okay and this will end up pa, 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 and in the end i'm at rrn yeah, multiplied s raised by the power of n xi from s okay so actually this is now the differential equation in picture area, in Laplace area. Did it help? Yes, it did. Because now, these are linear terms, yeah, XO is everything is linear, I can factor out this XO. Yeah? Here on, the, on this side, yeah, I can write XO from S multiplied by, and now big bracket, and inside this bracket, there will be tm multiplied by s raised by the power of m plus and so on. And then t1 multiplied by s plus 1. This is this part. Yeah? Just use this s also in black letters. Yeah? So we moved out xo. We, we factored out xo. And this equals, and here I can do exactly the same. Uh, you can do exactly the same. I get out, factor out xi from s, yeah, multiplied, and also big bracket, yeah, f2 divided by s squared, so plus point, 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 yeah, plus f1 divided by s, plus r0, plus r1 multiplied by s, plus pa, 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 plus rn multiplied by s raised by the power of n. Okay. Now I can simply divide by this. Yeah? So then there is now written xo equals xi multiplied yeah? and now there is a big long term this will be above the line plus f2 divided by s squared plus f1 divided by s plus r0 plus r1 multiplied by s plus whatever plus rn s raised by the power of n. Yeah, this is this term and division will then be, I will simply turn it around, yeah, 1 plus st1 plus poo, 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 plus s raised by the power of m, tm. This is this part. Yeah? And you see, this is just some factors, right? So this can be solved. This is a polynomial division. Yeah? So this part here, is called usually g from s. Yeah? And this part is the so-called uh, transfer function. This is the transfer function. Yeah. What does it mean? Let's remember how this looks like. Yeah. Let's remember this. There was our transfer element. 
which was described by this differential equation and now it's transfer it's described by the transfer function g from s yeah? however we had this input and the output in time but now there is again an input and there is again the output however this time this input is a function s and the output is also a function in x in s yeah. and the only thing i would have to do yeah is transfer the input time function in function in time into the laplace area multiply this with the transfer function in laplace area and then do inverse Laplace transformation into time area and I get out XO from T. Okay. This is how this could help solving our, our differential equation. However, you know, looking at this term uh, and also this one and also the inverse Laplace transformation, transformation it's not that easy. Okay, it's simply not that easy. So we simply would do a lot of math. Control engineers do not want to do math. They want to control. Yeah? So control engineers found a way on how to look at the transfer function and read quite a lot of bit out of that. Yeah? So we are ending up looking at the transfer function in picture area determining what the system is going to do in time area. Yeah? There are methods, there are rules how we can do it. If this and that is happening then it's probably not stable. If this and that is happening it's very likely to be stable. Yeah, We're Just looking at this transfer function here. Yeah? This we are going to, to do in future. Uh, in the next few videos. But for that it is important to understand what this transfer function is. Uh, so that we are no longer in time area, we are in the so-called picture or Laplace area and then a differential or transfer function is just a multiplication with some polynomial. That's it. That's it. Uh, doesn't sound too difficult, right? And it's not. Uh, Next time we are get taking a closer look at this transfer function. Next time we are going to talk about if we have not one transfer element but several transfer elements somehow chained together, uh, connected to each other, how we can maybe calculate a total transfer function. Can we summarize this and combine those things? Yeah? This will then be in next video. For this time Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.